Back again and time to get back to the PMR4 steam engine. Do you remember this? If you're one of half a dozen avid followers of the channel, uh, you'll remember that some time ago I machined this and these holes into this brass sheet in readiness to make the lagging for the cylinder. Here is the cylinder and it shows a approximate paper prototype in place. Now, one of the reasons I've procrastinated is that I wanted to make a jog feature in the end of the sheet to overlap where the two come together. But there isn't enough material on the brass sheet in order to manipulate the end to the shape that I want. So I'm going to give up on that. <clears throat> really, I need material so I can hang on to it and form the two bends in the jog. But there's so little there. There's technically enough for the jog but no more. And I need excess in order to actually hold on to it and form the two bends. So what I'm going to do is just shear off the excess and have them come together as close as possible and call it good. How am I going to form this, you ask? Well, I've made a tool. And it's very simple. It's just two pieces of... Um, 5 8 turned ground and polished rod mounted in an aluminum block in reamed holes to hold them steady. And <clears throat> the idea is that you put the sheet in and you can tweak and form the material to the radius that you need. And this is a technique that's used in professional fabrication shops. You can make a lot of different shapes and radii with it. So I think that will work well because what I'm trying to do is get two different radii in the same sheet. Um, and that will allow me to actually get in and form without kind of trapping myself. It's the theory anyway, and uh, we'll see how it goes. That's the plan for today. So what I'm going to do is take this sheet, mark it out first, carefully mark where the tangent points are maybe mark some additional points in the curves as guides. Um, and, but then it's gonna be a matter of hand tweaking until I get the shape I want. One of the advantages of a tool like this and this method is it's relatively simple to actually back up and undo a bend if you tweak it too far. And um, so I like that. Whereas if I use rollers, you know, it's just difficult to get them in there and I don't have a roll of this size. I could possibly do this one, but not this one. But I think this technique will work. So anyway, stick around, hit the like and subscribe buttons, please. Um, and let's see how it goes. I'll try and do this in the fabulous stop motion animation method. Uh, so it doesn't take too long for you. It will take me all day, but let's not worry about that. So what I've done, I've just used some Sharpie marker on the uh, brass sheet. And what I'll do is add a little bit of length to this, about a sixteenth of an inch. I'll lay that on there. And then I'll use a square and scriber to scribe the shear line. Okay, here's my little grizzly uh, combination shear, press break and slip roll machine. Uh, I have mixed feelings about this. Uh, honestly, my advice if you're interested in metal working machinery is, is not to buy one of these small things. They're kind of kind of wimpy. I think there's better solutions. This one, I've got a, I have to reset this every time I use it. It's vitally important that there is no gap between the blade 
and this. <clears throat> Otherwise it just smooshes the uh, material and this is always moving around. It does work but it's kind of a wimpy tool. And then, so I've got that lined up with the scribe mark right where I want the shear line. But now what I have to do is get a piece of plate and clamp on here to stop this bowing up. The tool comes with a kind of a spring loaded thing, but it really doesn't work. Consequently, there is so much faffing around when you want to use it. It's hard to see whether this really a useful tool. I could probably have hand trimmed this, taken some emery paper to it and cleaned it up and I'd be done by now still, just for the sake of demonstration. This is a real knuckle duster. Right, see? Fail. So I'm just going to trim that by hand and clean up. I should have just done it that way from the start. Hey, that's why I hardly ever use that tool. It's just crap. In this segment I'm just adding some scribe lines at the tangent points of the curves. The dimensions for the tangent points I got from the drawing are made and I'm just using my calipers to help position the scriber. I don't like using the calipers as scribers themselves, I just think that's an abhorrent practice. There comes a point where you just have to put your money where your mouth is and go for it. As you can see, it's, it's going to take some time. That's kind of the benefit, is that it's a gentle process that should allow for some recovery. Huh? Worst case, I might have to drill out a hole or two. But that is working.
That is working very nicely. Now here's where look I've got so I've got a little bit of a kink in here. And here's where you can kind of take a step back. Open it back up and reform. I think I'm going to call that good. I can see that I'm going to have to tickle out the holes just a little bit if I see if I can zoom in. You can see the alignment isn't perfect. I'm not entirely surprised. It's pretty good though. And that jacket comes nicely closed. And I think you'll agree. that is a pretty good form so i'm going to call that good i am very pleased with that very pleased indeed i am going to open up the holes just a little bit i'm pretty sure they won't fit as is and um but the reason and I gave a minimal cle clearance when I drilled them on the machine. Really, they're just pilot holes. There we are, just like that. I need to go one size bigger yet. Try not to let my hands get in the way, but that is difficult. got the jacket somewhat on for the most part not not bad not bad I'm gonna get in as many screws as I can and then I'll mark which ones need adjusting 
and do that. I'm pretty happy with how the uh, jacket has come together there. Back again. It turns out that I did not need to open any of the holes up any further. It's just one of those situations where given the inherent variability of the sheet metal and the fact that this is a cast shape and so there's some slight inaccuracies to it. It was really just a case of starting one end, working my way around, getting whatever screws in I could, leaving it loosely assembled and then gradually tightening up and I was able to get all the screws in. Got a slight distortion in the jacket there, that's why I wanted to do a jog. Um, but I can, I'll be able to tweak that and dress it up, but that's come nice and close together and as you can see, that's not a bad join at all. So that has worked out very well. Um, actually, I'm exceptionally happy with that. Nope, that's followed the form of the cylinder really well. The only place it hasn't <clears throat> is right here where there's a flat spot in the casting. I'm not worried about that. So that, in my opinion, is a resounding success. And again, this is a case of, you know, I could have formed this jacket, held it on with elastic bands or something and hand drilled these, but I now have the satisfaction of knowing that everything is evenly spaced um, and on angle and, and that the threads are perpendicular to the surface of the casting. And it's just, I just think that's a very nice job. So. That's actually the final component of this steam engine. It's now time to finish fettling all the castings and start painting. So hope you'll come back for that. I, I'll, I probably won't do much of a video on the painting. That's pretty basic stuff. Um, but I certainly will do a video of the final assembly and running on air again. Um, since I last tested it, I procured some O-rings and some Teflon rings, uh, which should be a better fit in the piston. And so I'm hoping to make it an even better running engine than it was before. Anyway, fabulously happy with this. Thanks very much for watching. Um, hope that was informative. That little tool is a really wonderful device. Uh, as you can see, something like this, you can form by hand as you go heavier in gauge, you start needing additional mechanical advantage in terms of leverage and things like that. But uh, it's this a very good technique for simple sheet metal forming.